Hello and welcome to this week's Spotlight. My name is Derek and this week we are checking out some Meprolite. I know you can hear all that. Just bear with us on this because it's gonna be like this for a few more videos. But anyway, Meprolite. Uh, they, like me, were created in 1990, but these guys come from Israel and we have a couple of them here to check out. First one is this, the M21. It comes in a couple different reticle size and shape options, and it will attach to the rifle via these Picatinny rail quick detach levers here. And also you could get these with a carry handle mount, which is a bit interesting because it seems like the carry handle is making a comeback. I like it. It is powered by fiber optic and tritium, so there's no battery in this whatsoever. So basically what that means is the fiber optic array up top here captures the ambient light and projects it onto the reticle. Indoors, it's not mega bright, but outside it looks very, very clean. And, and it also is really good for people with astigmatism. I have a couple people in the office here that I use as pseudo test subjects for such things. And uh, they all like this one a lot. Now a quick note on fiber optic and tritium. And this is true of other optics that use a similar sort of technology. When you're using something like this, you're pretty much always using the fiber optic. Now the tritium is always on, so to speak, but it's so dim, you really don't notice it unless you're in really, really low light conditions. So anything like right now with these studio lights, it's definitely obvious. And most of the time you'll be running it with the aid of the fiber optic. Now tritium, uh, as I'm sure a lot of you know, does have a lifespan. It's about 10 to 12 years before it becomes pretty useless. And the thing is though, a lot of people think that that's the lifespan of this optic. And that's not strictly true because even though the tritium might be faded off and not really usable anymore, the fiber optic doesn't have any such lifespan like that. So you can continue to use this for long after the tritium is dead because like I said, most of the time, especially in daylight, you're on the fiber optic anyway. Indoors, if you get one of these things, you will probably notice that it has a bit of a blue tint when looking through it, but that largely goes away when you're outside. So nothing really to worry about there. This thing looks really nice outside. There is one more thing that I do like about this that's not exactly fancy or anything like that, but when you're looking through it and you move it around like this, a lot of other red dots, the glass will distort the image. This, you really don't get anything. So uh, the edge to edge is very nice and crisp and it doesn't distort that image pretty much at all, which small detail, I know, but uh, I do like it. Lastly, the center line height on this, um, there's no official spec that I could find out, but I did take a pretty accurate measurement, I think, and that was 1.7 inches, which is not exactly a lower one third, typically lower one thirds around 1.54 or so. But with the flip up iron sights that I did check with this thing, you were still able to see them through it, albeit really low, like, like just able to see the iron sights through it. So I mean, if lower fifth co-witness was a thing, I, I'm sure you could call it that. Okay, next is the micro RDS, this little guy. Now this one deploys a rather creative mounting system because it is designed to go on a handgun. And when you're shopping for these things, you can see that they will come with an iron sight for a couple different pistols. This one in particular comes with this sight for a SIG 226 or a 320. Now the reason it looks like this, it's a uh, it's about an inch and a bit long and has a little cut right here. The reason that is there is you replace your rear iron sight with this and the front one, which it comes with, but on the rear sight, you put this in there and then this little notch here acts as a quick detach point for putting on the red dot itself. There we go. So basically quick detach here and then now you can run your pistol with a red dot that will retain its zero. But also if you don't wanna run it with a red dot, you can just take it right off. 
The battery is a typical 2032, which is good, and it installs from the top, so you don't need to take off the red dot to change the battery. And the battery life is your typical couple hundred to a couple thousand hours. Dot size is also 3MOA. And as far as the astigmatism, I did give this to my team here to look at, and it got good remarks from them. Now there is one last important note that I wanna say about these. And that's the footprint on these is a bit unique in the sense of while the, the recoil lugs and the whole spacing for the perimeter of it is exactly the same as what you'll find on something like Vortex Venom, Viper, Doctor, Burst, Fast Fire, and all those, the screw locations here are going to be in a different location. So there's no mount that we carry right now that will let you take it off this and putting on something else. That is something that we'll work on, but as of this video filming, we don't have that yet. Next up is one of their latest red dots called the Foresight. It's very similar to the RDS Pro, which looks pretty much the same thing, but it has a couple more bells and a few more whistles. The RDS Pro is basically just a red dot or red reticle with uh, brightness control. This one, you can actually Bluetooth to it and control a few different aspects of it. So you can control which of the 20 or so reticles you can go through. You can put five on at any given moment and change through them on the fly. You can control what you see on the display because it'll give you uh, your heading via compass. It'll give you your, your cant on the optics like this and it also give you the battery life and all that. So there's a bit that this displays that, and you can choose how much to display. As far as the compass rating, um, I would say it probably makes sense from a military standpoint. If, uh, if you know where to direct fire, you're trying to get your buddies all to shoot in the same direction, you can pretty much go, hey, 297, and that'll get you guys on or about the same target. As a civilian, um, I'm open to input. Comment below what you think would be a good uh, use of that compass heading reading on something like this from a civilian standpoint. And with the cant indicator here, it'll tell you when you're not centered. On a red dot, that's an interesting decision to use on something like this, but uh, I'd say if you put a magnifier behind that, that plus the reticle options, you could actually get some distance out of this thing. And of course, the farther out you go, the more important it is to make sure that your optic is level. Now when you are looking through it indoors when it's on you do see a bit of a square perimeter around the display. Uh, like I said with the other optics here that does go away in daylight so indoors not that big a deal. And like the M21 as well it does have a center line height that's about 1.7 that metaphorical lower fifth co-witness. For battery it is an internal battery, it charges via USB-C, and it has a 50 hour life. Last but certainly not least is my favorite of the bunch, the MOR Pro. It's powered by two AA batteries and fiber optic and tritium. So you do have the best of all three of those attributes. You do have manual control of the brightness when you want to, but you can also just leave the batteries off run it off the fiber optic or tritium. This one also passes the astigmatism test by my test subjects and it has a visible green laser, as you can see there, but also it has an IR laser built into it as well. That last part is very nice because it can simplify your night vision setup on your weapon. So as opposed to having something like a D-ball up front, with an IR laser and light and visible laser, you could have this and then just an IR light on the front of your weapon and simplify it down. Because the lasers on these, they are collimated to the reticle itself. So when you make the adjustments here, it moves that perfectly in, in tune. The cable switch is more or less permanently attached to this. You could take it off by the looks of it, but honestly, I don't think that's, that there's anything out there that you could swap this for. So um, with this pressure switch, it does come with this uh, Velcro strap here, but if you didn't like this, you could just as well put this on with uh, some zip ties or some hockey tape or something like that. The color of the reticle is a sort of orange color here. It's not amber, it's not red. It's uh, I think orange is a good word to use to describe this. 
In the daylight, it is very, very clear and uh, very distinctive from the surrounding area. And of course, on something like this, like I said, you can up the brightness if you want. It does turn a little bit into a sort of amber, yellowish color, but either way, I have found this very nice to use. So that'll wrap up the Mepra lights that we have here. Now we do have these and their whole lineup that we carry on our website with the free red one day shipping. So definitely take advantage of that. You'll also find us on Facebook and Instagram and we'll see you next week.